Okay, welcome back. Part four is on the shorter side compared to the first few parts of this course, but that doesn't make it any less important. The proxy workflow is a very important part of modern video editing workflows, thanks to the video resolutions that are constantly increasing. If you're trying to work with 8K footage on a laptop, it realistically can't happen without using proxies. And if you're editing on a desktop, proxies can still make working with footage that's higher resolution than HD footage a lot easier. So what is a proxy? Well, they're just lower resolution stand-ins for high resolution media. It's easier on a computer to chop and move around and play back HD video than an 8K source file. It just makes sense. Using proxies kicks off an offline online workflow, meaning that all creative offline editing will use proxy footage. Then when it's time to finish and deliver, the high resolution source media will be swapped out and used for the final delivery. Now proxies come in two flavors. They can be made in camera while recording the source footage, or they can be encoded after ingesting the media into your NLE. For smoother editing, it's still recommended to use a good intra-frame codec when making the proxies, like a low bitrate version of ProRes or DNX HD. But if space is a real concern, you can even make proxies out of H.264s. Premiere Pro makes proxy creation very easy. Simply select the clips in your project you want to make the proxies for, right-click and choose Proxy, Create Proxies and then the magic happens. On the Create Proxies window that opens, you select your destination for the proxies and how you want to encode them. Premiere uses ingest settings to encode the proxies, and it comes with good default options right off the shelf. But for more control, you can create your own ingest settings when creating proxies by using Media Encoder. Our other option for creating proxies comes from Onset and can save us hours of encoding by capturing proxies in camera. If you're using in-camera proxies, all you have to do to connect them in Premiere is select the source media inside of Premiere, right-click and choose Proxy, Attach Proxies. You'll then point Premiere Pro to the folder with the proxy files. If you can, it's always good to discuss with the DP or the DIT on set how they're creating the proxies in camera. And if you're editing in Premiere, you'll need to make sure that all the proxy files have underscore proxy added to the end of their file name. I'll show you exactly what I mean in just a minute. You'll also want to make sure with the guys on set that the audio channels in the proxies matches the source files exactly. If they don't, you're going to run into an issue. Mismatched audio. I'll be the first to admit that this is a terribly annoying feature in Premiere Pro. At the time that I'm building this course, the program still demands that source and proxy files have matching audio channels, and it gives you this nasty message if they don't. It's super frustrating, and there aren't many great workarounds for the issue either. Your best bet is to make sure that in production that the audio channels that are recorded in the proxies match up with the source footage audio channels. Other options include re-encoding the proxy footage so that the proper audio channel configuration can be added to the proxies, but at that point you might as well generate your own proxies from the source media because you're re-encoding anyways. The other option would be to offline and online the footage via a relinking process. And for the headache that it would cause and the problems that it might create, I just really can't recommend it. Once the proxies are attached, editing with them is really easy. It works just like editing with regular source footage, except that you can toggle the proxies on and off. The toggle proxy button can be found in Premiere's program monitor controls. Once you're ready to export, kick things out like you normally would. Premiere will automatically reference the source footage when it's exported. And sometimes you might not want that though, because it would be faster to export a rough cut using the proxy footage. As of fall 2020, Adobe added the helpful option to use proxy footage when exporting. Just look for the checkbox. Enough of these slides. Let's take a real look at how this workflow works. To do that, I have two bins here in my project panel that have some footage of the Golden Gate Bridge. It's just some beauty shots, nothing crazy, um, as well as some cool footage of some Mustangs driving down a road. Now, you can see that both of these sets of clips are 5K and 6K, so they're rather large and they could be kind of hard to work with when you're editing. So proxies would be a great way to go when working with these. The first that I want to pull up is this Mustang footage. So let's grab all four of these clips, right click and say proxy, create proxies. Now, a new window is going to pop up inside of Premiere Pro, and it's going to ask you how you want to make these proxies. And it's going to default to QuickTime. That's my preference anyways. Um, and it'll pull up presets. Now, we can choose any of these presets that are in here. But the issue that you probably don't notice is that this footage is not 1920 by 1080. It's a wide frame size. So if we open it up, 
It's 6144 by 2592. That's really long and skinny. So if we make a 1920 by 1080 proxy out of that, it's going to have a squished image. And we don't want that. So we need to make our own ingest preset. To do that, we're going to go over to Adobe Media Encoder, click on this plus icon, and say create new encoding preset first. We have to create an encoding preset first because when you're creating proxies in Premiere Pro, Premiere Pro only lets you use ingest presets. So to build an ingest preset, we have to build an encoding preset first. It'll make more sense once we do it together. So to do this, let's make our new preset and we'll call it better editor um, proxy encode. We'll give it a dash and let's see what frame size this is going to be. So we don't want to use width and height based on source. And even if we did, Premiere wouldn't let us use that as an option for creating proxies. So make sure you uncheck this and uncheck frame rate. We want these to be standardized. And by that, I mean, we want to tell Premiere this is the exact frame size and the exact frame rate to use when you're making these proxies. So I'm going to go ahead and make this 25 because that's what our source footage is in, 25 FPS. And for the width, I want to make it some size similar to this 6144 by 2592. So let's look at that. We'll do, we'll uncheck this relationship here. So 6144 and change that to 2552. Is that right? 2592. And we'll make that 2592. Great. Now we can add these back together and then reduce it down to something that's a lot more friendly to work with, like 1920. So that would be 1920 by 810. That'll be perfect for this footage. So we're going to leave that the way it is. We'll make our field order, keep that progressive, and our aspect ratio, we'll keep that as square pixels. Now, back at our preset name, I want to write in there what frame size this is. We want to give a little bit more information. So back at our preset name, we want to give a little bit more information than just naming this in code. So I'm going to call this 1920 by 810, so I know it's long and skinny. And then I'm also going to give it the frame rate, so 25 FPS. And we'll copy this because I can use the same name or a similar name for the ingest preset. So this all looks good. The audio is going to be made into a linear PCM. That'll be great. And we'll say, OK. Now, jump back over here to this plus icon and say, create ingest preset. And here, let's paste the name that we just copied. And instead of encode, I'm going to call this ingest, so I know there's a difference. And let's jump down here to our transfer option. Now, it's looking at this for an ingest preset, like bringing these clips into Premiere Pro and letting Premiere Pro change them into something else. So if we were doing that, we could use copy files to destination. But since we're interested in transcoding them into proxies, we want to select the transcode option. For the destination, I'm going to put it at this Z exports folder. The Z drive on my computer is what I call my render RAID. So that's where I send things because it's really fast. I can export there, and it'll go quickly. The format, QuickTime, is OK. And for the preset, we want to come here and grab the new preset we just made. So better editor proxy encode. Great. And we'll say OK. So get that out of the way. And now let's jump back into Premiere Pro. So select our clips again. We're going to right click, go to proxy, create proxies. And now once we're creating the proxies, the new window will pop up. It'll be QuickTime, which is good. And we want to go to preset. You'll see that our ingest preset isn't in here. That's because we haven't imported it yet. I know there's a lot of steps. But here, let's add this ingest preset that we just created. So the file path is different for both Mac and Windows. If you check the PDF for part four of this series, I'll make sure to link them in that PDF so you'll know exactly where to go. But on Windows, you can go to Documents, Adobe, Media Encoder, the version that you're on, Presets. And in Presets, we can find our better editor proxy ingest 1920 by 810, 25 FPS. Perfect. And say open. The last thing we have to choose is because we're creating proxies, Premiere gives us this option of using the default Z scratch that we set in the preset, or we can set it next to original media in a proxy folder. I'm going to select that so that it goes directly to my media drive. Say OK. Creating proxy jobs pulls those jobs into Premiere Pro, where it creates the proxies for you automatically. And now, since we're only doing four clips, this went by rather quickly. So now we can jump to that folder, and these are our proxies. Now, I want to show you something at the end of this. It added underscore proxy to all of these file names, and that's important to note because when we go to 
attach proxies, we're going to need to do the same thing. Let me show you what I'm talking about there. So let's come back in here. Let's attach some camera proxies. So to do that, we're going to open up an Explorer window and we'll go to our Golden Gate 5K footage. And in this proxy folder that uh, came with these files, you're going to see we have these proxies that have already been created. Now, you'll notice that they don't have the underscore proxy on them. Premiere really wants to see that underscore proxy added to all these names. So we can rename these and do it manually. Or what I prefer to do when you're doing something repetitive like this is use an app for Windows. There's a free one called Advanced Renamer. That is awesome. You can drag this in here. We can add something to the end of the name, underscore proxy. And we'll do this backwards at the end of the file name on the name and say start batch. Boom. All my files have been renamed. Now, it probably took about the same amount of time to do that as it would to rename all these clips by hand. But imagine if you had hundreds of clips that you had to do that to. That is infinitely faster. There's also apps for Mac that do the exact same thing as Advanced Renamer does for Windows. Make sure you check out the PDF where I link to a few of those. All right. So now we can jump back into Premiere Pro, select all of these clips. Let's go ahead and open it up so we know what we're looking at. Select all these clips, right click and say proxy, attach proxies. And we can go to attach, navigate to that folder. So Golden Gate proxies, great. And we're going to point the first one to that first clip and say, OK. And what's awesome is because they are named the exact same thing and have that underscore proxy, Premiere Pro relinks to everything else automatically. And now, my friends, you are done attaching proxies. So now I want to show you how to edit with these and possibly export them inside of Premiere. So let's work with the Mustang clips because that's going to be more fun. And I'm just going to drag this into a 1080p sequence. Now, these clips are 6K. So as you can see, it kind of hangs up from time to time as I scrub through them. That's because it's currently pulling the source resolution. I want to use the proxies, though. And in order to do that, I need to go up to my program window, click this plus icon, and find this little guy right here that's called Toggle Proxies. So grab this, and I'm going to drag it down to my menu bar and say OK. Now I can hit this button. And now I'm using proxies. Whenever you see that that is blue, that means that your proxies are turned on. And look at how smooth that footage works. Otherwise, you continue to edit, do things as you normally would. Move clips around. You can shuffle stuff. These clips work the exact same way as they would if they weren't proxies. So if I turn that off, it now goes back to being same as source. Now let's say we want to export this thing. So with this selected, we can say Control E for export. Now in here, let's say we're just going to make an H.264. This looks great. The important thing to look at is down here at the bottom of your export window, the option for use proxies. This is something new to Premiere in 2020. Now you can export using the proxies. It'll pull from the proxy footage when this option is checked rather than pulling from the source footage. So what that does is give you a faster export if you use the proxies, but the quality will be lower because it is, of course, using the proxy footage. What did that tell you? That one was super short. Coming up in part five, we're going to be syncing audio and video. See you then.